God's holy word. First scripture is Colossians 3, chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and abolish one another in all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. Next scripture is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you this morning. We pray that the words from our songs and hymns and our praises and the words spoken here today will fall on fertile ears and that your word will be heard among the people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So learning to be thankful every day. Appropriate. Everything is on thankfulness today. We have Thanksgiving coming up. November is really such a beautiful month. You have the leaves that fall. Yes, we do have to clean them up, but they are fun to play with the kids, the grandkids, the dogs, as well as uh, kicking them and just having some general fun. The thing is, is that finding the joy in all the little things that God has created for us. As children, we are taught to say, please and thank you to learn the importance of manners. In years gone by, it was commonplace to treat others with such acts of kindness as opening a door or helping someone across the street. Teaching children about gratitude and thanksgiving is important as it lays the foundations for our lives as adults as well as walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And we all need to remember that we are all still children of God. And we are all still learning. Unfortunately, things are different now than what they were so many years ago. But there are ways that we can learn to be thankful every day. Gratitude is a thankful appreciation for what an individual receives whether tangible or intangible. With gratitude, people acknowledge the goodness in their lives. In this process, people usually recognize that the source of that goodness lies at least partially outside of themselves. I personally choose to believe that goodness that comes from others is a direct or indirect from God who uses his children in a way to bless others. As a result, gratitude also helps people to connect to something larger than themselves. As individuals, whether to other people, to nature, to God. There's been research that's been done on the effects of gratitude and being thankful, a uh, psychological Psychological yeah. research shows out of Berkeley that gratitude and being thankful is consistently associated with greater happiness. Now, this study looked at over a thousand people of various ages who practiced and engaged in being grateful and demonstrated positive effects from it. Physical attributes included a stronger immune system. They were less likely bothered with aches and pains, not saying that we don't have them, especially as we get older. Lower blood pressure. Exercising more and taking better care of their health. They slept longer and felt more refreshed upon waking up. The psychological attributes included higher levels of positive emotions, being more alert, alive, and awake, experiencing more joy and pleasure, more optimism and happiness. 
able to deal with diversity. Social attributes included more helpful, generous, and compassionate way of giving, more forgiving, more outgoing, feeling less lonely and isolated. The benefits of having a grateful and thankful heart sounds pretty good to me. But there's also barriers to growing and practicing gratitude and having a thankful heart. In particular, envy, materialism, narcissism, and cynicism can be thought of as thieves of thankfulness. These traits and behaviors steals our ability to be grateful. You can also look at these in the book of Proverbs, and you'll see that the Word of God emphasizes these points quite clearly. All we need to know is in God's Word, our instruction manual. But we have to be able to read it, we have to be able to understand it and to utilize it, how it applies to our life at that particular moment in time. Sometimes we don't get the message, but at another time it will become more pertinent to us and we will understand it. So there are some ways that we can learn to be thankful every day. In all things, recognize God in his hand, in his presence in our daily lives. Keep a gratitude journal. Keeping a gratitude journal allows us to reflect on previous experiences. Establish a daily practice in which you remind yourselves of the gifts, benefits, and good things you enjoy. All good things come from God. Setting aside time on a daily basis to recall moments of gratitude associated with ordinary events. Your personal attributes or valued people in your life gives you the potential to interweave a substantial life theme of gratefulness. To be grateful in your current state, it is a helpful reminder to that hard times that once you've experienced, now you remember how difficult life used to be and how far you've come. You can set up an explicit contrast in your mind and this contrast is a perfect ground for gratefulness. Just look at the Apostle Paul. He talked about how he learned to be content in any circumstances. Learn prayers of gratitude. In many spiritual traditions, prayers of gratitude are considered to be one of the most powerful forms of prayer because through these prayers, people recognize the ultimate source of all they are and all they will ever be. They give us comfort. They give us joy. There are many prayers on thanksgiving and gratitude in God's word. Choose one or choose a couple and make them your daily mantra. The more you say them, the more the word is rooted into your heart, and the more your heart will be open to thanksgiving and to gratitude. The serenity prayer is one of humility. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's really quite profound, because it is a daily walk for all of us. And it opens our heart for gratitude and thanksgiving. Through our senses, the ability to touch, see, smell, taste, and hear, we can gain an appreciation of what it means to be human, and of what an incredible miracle it is to be alive. Seen through the lens of gratitude, the human body is not only a miracle in its construction, but also a gift. Think back to the story of Saul, who persecuted Christians for their beliefs, and on the road to Damascus, he ended up losing his sight. 
This experience of Saul losing his sight allowed his other senses to become more hyperactive or aware of other things through touch, smell, taste, and especially hearing. It was through this experience that changed Paul's life and directed him down a path he never would have gone. God's touch can be life-altering and not necessarily in a way that we expected because Saul did really not expect the path that he was going to go down as Paul. Use visual reminders. Because of two primary obstacles to gratefulness and forgetfulness, and a lack of mindful awareness. Visual reminders can serve as cues to trigger thoughts of gratitude. Often the best visual reminders are other people. On my tablet at the stroke of midnight, I have a reminder that pops up so that when I look at it in the morning, it reminds me, be joyful and thankful all day long for God's gifts. Now, I can tell you that this has probably been on my tablet for a matter of six, maybe seven years. But the thing is, it is a daily reminder for me that to be joyful and to be thankful all day long for God's gifts, no matter how small they may seem or how at that moment we may not recognize them. But we need to be called back to think about them. Besides that little reminder on my tablet, I have in my office written notes on index cards, scriptures written that so that when I'm in my office and I look at them, it makes me think. And I read them. And it kind of changes my whole mindset of what I went into the office to do. You can follow this, this example. Place reminders inside your medicine cabinet. So you open it up, you're reading your favorite scriptures or perhaps a favorite prayer. You can also place them inside your kitchen cabinets. Another good place. Every time you open a cabinet, you're going to see it and you're going to read it. And let those words take heart and firmly rooted. These small things help us to grow in thankfulness. Make a vow to practice gratitude and thankfulness. It's been proven that when we do commit to something, we have much better chance of sticking to it. And that's really what we want to do moving forward. Watch what you say and how you say it. Anybody who's read God's word, there's more in there about thinking before you speak, holding your tongue, biting your tongue. It's important that we think before we open our, our mouths to say something. And it's really important that we reflect what we say is a part of God's goodness that we need to be joyful for. So really think about what you say. Take that minute and stand back before you go to say something because words do have meanings and they do reflect on other people. Express gratitude to others. There's many people that I have met in my journey through life that I am thankful for. A lot of them are right here in this church. The thing of saying thank you or sending someone a note to say how thankful you are to have them in your life is a powerful statement of us walking in God's love. I really recommend that you try to do this. You will see not only how it blesses you, but blesses the person that you send it to. Granted, things have changed. We have email. People call the postal service snail mail. But sometimes just to get that snail mail letter with just a thought of gratefulness for someone else is very heartwarming and touching 
and brings a moment of joy to that person. Serve God with a joyful and grateful heart. This is truly one of the greatest of all. We are not perfect. We are far from perfect. No matter how hard we try, as Pastor Sheila says, we fall short of the mark. It is a daily journey, a daily recommitment to serve God with a joyful and grateful heart. And it's something that we really need to strive on more. So here are some of the ways, the takeaways, on how to be grateful and to cultivate gratitude. Take some time each day and just think of one or two things that you have that you take for granted for, that you can take in that moment and thank God for those things. Prayer reflects our gratitude to God. When we pray, we should pour out our hearts and thanks and many blessings for what we have received. I know that, you know, sometimes it's a, a thing that we take for granted, the small little things, or you hear the comment, well, thank God. But we really need to expound on that. Thank God for those little blessings because they turn into big blessings. Gratitude teaches you the things that will not always go your way. We've seen that in our lives, good times, bad times, difficult times. We wonder how we ever made it through or how we can make it through. But then we always get to the other side. And the good thing that comes out of it is that we realize that in those dire times that we're not alone, that we have God with us and that he walks with us every step of the way. I found that through going through these motions that they become rooted. And I found myself losing the me perspective and gained a more we perspective. Gratitude opens the heart and unleashes the true power of love. Remember, jot down some, some scriptures that give you that joy and gratitude. In Romans 12, verses 12 through 13, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Hmm, I think we kind of covered that in, in our uh, things we can do to be more thankful. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, giving thanksgiving, Present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Go through your Bible. Pick out your favorite verses. Put them inside your medicine cabinets. Put them on the wall by your desk. Put them in your kitchen cabinets. Look at them every day and they will grow in your hearts and be firmly rooted. You know, I, I'm gonna close with this because I came across this uh, in a, uh, a wonderful little book by Oprah Winfrey called A Month of Sundays. Be thankful for what you have. You'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never, ever have enough. And that is very true. So with that.